We'll begin from ayah number 9. وَهَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ مُوسَى And has the story of Musa a.s. reached you? Who is being addressed over here? The Prophet ﷺ. Have you heard about the story of Musa? Do you know it? Do you remember it? And notice the word hadith. It means over here, news, story. Right? And the word hadith is from hadatha. Hadatha. And hadatha literally means, كَوْنُ شَيْءْ لَمْ يَكُنْ When something that did not exist before happens. It now exists. Alright? This is why the word hadith is also used for speech. Because what was said, those words did not exist before. They were inside a person. They were his thoughts, his feelings, and then he said them. Right? Hadith is also used for a report. Something that you did not know about before, but now it was reported to you, so you came to know about it. Now the story of Musa a.s., the Prophet ﷺ was not unfamiliar with it. But the word hadith has been used as if he's being told that even though you know it, even though you know it from before, there is always something new to learn. There is always something new to reflect on. There is always new lessons to derive for yourself. And this is something that you will find in the Qur'an. That even though you are familiar with something from before, you've studied it before, you know it really well, but because of what you're going through in your life, when you come across those ayat, you understand them very differently. It's as though you are learning them for the first time. Each time you review it, it brings a new message to you, a new lesson to you. So, وَهَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ مُوسَى إِذْ رَأَى نَارًا when he saw a fire in the distance, when he was traveling from Madian to Egypt, فَقَالَ لِأَهْلِهِمْ كُثُوا He said to his family, Stay here, إِنِّي أَنَسْتُ نَارًا I have seen some fire. لَعَلِّي آتِيكُمْ مِنْهَا بِقَبَسٍ أَوْ أَجِدُ عَلَى النَّارِ هُدَى Stay here, I'll go, perhaps I can get some fire, so that you may warm yourselves, or if nothing, maybe I'll find some guidance. Maybe we'll find out which way is a better way, which route would be more better for us. فَلَمَّا أَتَاهَا نُودِيَ يَا مُوسَى When he reached the fire, he was called, O Musa, إِنِّي أَنَا رَبُّكْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed him directly. Indeed, I am your Lord. فَخْلَعْنَا عَلَيْكَ Remove your shoes. Why? Because إِنَّكَ بِالْوَادِ الْمُقَدَّسِ طُوَى You are in the sacred valley of طُوَى And a sacred place deserves respect. Hence, when a person is doing something that is noble, then he must show respect to that. How? By his clothing, by his behavior, by his attitude. You know, for instance, the Prophet ﷺ, how is it that he dressed up? Not necessarily in fancy clothes, but how was he? Clean. Right? He was clean. Why? Because this is adab. You know, the Prophet ﷺ, at one occasion, he was offered some vegetables that were cooked with garlic. Alright? And the Prophet ﷺ refused to eat it. He was asked, why? Is this haram? He said, no, because I speak to someone that you don't speak to. Meaning, Jibreel comes to me, he brings the Qur'an to me, and it is not appropriate that I have had garlic and I have garlic breath and I'm talking to Jibreel and Jibreel is giving me the Qur'an. It's against the etiquette. So, فَخْلَعْنَ عَلَيْكَ Because, إِنَّكَ بِالْوَادِ الْمُقَدَّسِ طُوَى Now, you know, there are many things which are generally, I mean, they're okay. It's halal. Alright? It's permissible. For instance, chewing gum. Is there anything wrong with it? You know, you might argue it's not good for your health. Okay, but essentially it is permissible. Correct? But if you go for an interview, for a job interview, would you be chewing gum over there? Why? Why? It's not appropriate. Likewise, when we're sitting in a Quran class, do you think it's okay that our mouth is constantly moving, we're chewing gum? Does it look good? Think about it. If a guest came to your house, and you've prepared like a nice proper dinner for them and you're serving them at the table, it's a, and then they're chewing gum. Come on. Or if somebody comes to your house in pajamas, it doesn't look nice. Everything has its adab, right? So this is something that we need to be careful about. That a gathering of Quran, for example, what adab does it have? What adab does it deserve from us? Yeah, or even raw onion, for example, right? So for instance, the Prophet ﷺ did not allow that people should come to the masjid after having eaten raw garlic or raw onion. Because it disturbs people. 
right? Likewise, we see that on Friday, people would come from far off places to attend Jumu'ah in the Masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And even though they had taken a bath or whatever, but by the time they would arrive at the masjid, their clothes would be sweaty and dirty. So the Prophet ﷺ said that if only you would take a bath. If only you would come clean. Right? Why? Because there's adab. Respect. Right? Just as you would make yourself presentable, you would make sure that you're not doing anything inappropriate when you go for a job interview. Likewise, when you come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for salah, to a gathering of Qur'an, then over there also, there's some adab that we need to observe. فَخْلَعْنَا عَلَيْكَ إِنَّكَ بِالْوَادِ الْمُقَدَّسِ يَطُوَى وَأَنَا اخْتَرْتُكْ And I have chosen you. فَاسْتَمِعْ لِمَا يُوحَى So listen attentively. That's the first lesson. إِنَّنِي أَنَ اللَّهِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَاعْبُدْنِي Then the lesson of Tawheed. وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِي And what to do? Establish the prayer. Why? To remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the objective of prayer, the purpose of prayer, the purpose of salah is what? To remember Allah. And if a person is performing the salah, but he is not remembering Allah, then is he fulfilling the purpose of prayer? No, he's not. This is why the munafiqun have been criticized in the Qur'an. وَلَا يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا They come to the prayer lazily, and when they do pray, they hardly remember Allah. إِنَّ السَّاعَةَ آتِيَةٌ The Musa a.s. is taught about the coming of the Day of Judgment. أَكَادُ أُخْفِيهَا لِتُجْزَى كُلُّ نَفْسٍ بِمَا تَسْعَى Each person will be recompensed for what it has been striving for. فَلَا يَصُدَّنَّكَ عَنْهَا مَنْ لَا يُؤْمِنُ بِهَا وَاتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ فَتَرُدَى Even though you'll come across many people who don't believe in the hour, who don't believe in God, who don't believe that it's necessary to pray, don't get influenced by those people. Because if you get influenced by them, فَتَّارُدَّا You will be ruined. You will be destroyed. So take care of your iman. Protect your iman. Save your iman. Look after it. Guard it. Don't put yourself in situations where your iman will become weak. Don't do that. Guard your faith. Now over here, Musa a.s. is basically being given prophethood. This is where he's given the gift of prophethood, the responsibility of prophethood. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a responsibility to a servant, he also equips him. He also gives him the strength, the ability, the resources with which he can perform his job. So Musa alayhi salam, he was chosen as a prophet. He was to go to Bani Israel. He was supposed to go to Fir'aun. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also equipped him. And over here we see, in the following ayah, the gifts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to Musa a.s. وَمَا تِلْكَ وَمَا and what? تِلْكَ is that, be a meaning, in your right hand. Ya Musa, O Musa. O Musa, what is that in your right hand? Allah is asking Musa a.s. What's in your right hand? Does Allah not already know? Seriously. Allah knows already. I mean, in the previous ayat we learned, وَإِن تَجْهَرُ بِالْقَوْلِ فَإِنَّهُ يَعْلَمُ السِّرَّ وَأَخْفَى Right? Nothing is hidden from Allah. Allah knows about everything. Yet Allah is asking Musa a.s. What is this in your hand? Why? Yes, to get Musa a.s. attention. And you see, what Musa a.s. had in his hand was the staff, his stick. Right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was going to give him a miracle with that stick. So Musa a.s. attention is being drawn towards his staff. Alright? Now, there is a very important lesson that we learn from this. That, you know, generally we see people, for instance, children or other people, and we take no interest in them. We take no interest in them, what they have, what they're doing, what they're studying, where they're going. No interest. We don't ask them about how they are, what they're doing. And when we don't take interest in people, then what happens? They don't take interest in us. They don't care about what we have to say. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking Musa about Musa's stick. Out of all things, his stick. You know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, once he asked a young boy whose bird had died, what happened to your bird? What happened to your bird? 
He took interest in the bird of, in the dead bird of that little boy. Because when we show our concern for other people and we take interest in their lives, then they will be receptive of, of what we have to say to them, of what we have to give them. So, وَمَا تِلْكَ بِيَمِينِكَ يَا مُوسَى قَالَ هِيَ عَصَايَ Musa a.s. said, Hiya, it is asaya, my stick. It is my asa. He didn't stop there. He went on. He said, أَتَوَكَّأُ عَلَيْهَا I lean upon it. أَتَوَكَّأُ from the root letters, wow, kaf, hamza. Ittika is to lean against something. In the Quran, we learn about the people of Jannah, muttakiin, muttakiun, ones who are reclining. Alright? So, أَتَوَكَّأُ Meaning, I support myself, I lean against it when I'm standing or when I'm climbing. Wa ahushu, and I also ahushu, I bring down. Bring down what? Leaves. For who? Ala ghanami. Ahushu biha, with the stick, I bring down leaves, ala ghanami, for my sheep. Ahushu is from the root letters ha, sheen, sheen, hash. Hash is basically something that is soft, that is easy to break. Like, for example, uh, bread. All right? Especially bread when it's dried, then what happens? You can easily break it up. All right? You can easily crush it to powder. This is how you make breadcrumbs. All right? Dried bread, you crush it up and you make breadcrumbs with it. Hashatish shajara. What is shajara? A tree. Hashatish shajara is when the tree drops its leaves one by one. Have you seen that in fall? Fall, because the leaves fall. Right? One by one. Hasha is to assault with a stick. So just imagine somebody with a stick going after someone. Just beating them. This is what hasha is. So ahushu, I beat the branches or the tree or the shrubs. Why? In order to bring down leaves for my sheep. Right? Because sheep or goats, I mean, they eat leaves, right? But whatever leaves are at their level, within their reach, they will eat them. But then many times they're beyond their reach. So what's the job of the shepherd? Bring down those leaves. Either beat the tree or bring the branches down so that the animals can eat. Wali and for me, fiha in it, meaning in the staff, are ma'aribu uses. Ukhra, many other. It's a multi-purpose stick. I do many things with it. I fulfill many of my needs with the stick. The word ma'arib is a plural of ma'raba. Ma'raba. From the root letters, hamza, ra, ba, irb. Irb means haja, a need. Alright, a need. Meaning a need, a desire that has to be fulfilled. Alright. And it's also said that irb is a haja or a need that is extreme. Meaning, you can't just fulfill it easily, but you have to do something. You have to make a plan or something like that in order to fulfill that need. This is what irb is. Right? And arib, have you heard of the name arib? Hmm? Arib is used for someone who is very skillful and expert. Because they know how to fulfill their needs. They make great plans, they're very skillful, and they know how to fulfill their needs. So this is who Arib is. So you know any person who's named Arib? Okay, you can tell them what their name means. So, Ma'raba, a need, a want. And if you think about it, you need to be skillful in order to fulfill your needs. So Musa a.s. is basically saying that this staff of mine is very handy, it's very useful, I can get lots of things done with the stick. You know, it's just a stick, but so useful. And now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give him another very important thing that he can do with his staff. You know, there are many things in our lives which are useful, which are beneficial, that are handy, that we use to fulfill our needs. But when you use it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will bring you much more benefit. Much more benefit. Qala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Alqiha, throw it. Ya Musa, O Musa. Such a useful stick. And Allah is telling Musa a.s. Throw it. Musa a.s. Without any hesitation, without any question, he just threw it. فَأَلْقَاهَا So he threw it. فَإِذَا Then all of a sudden. إِذَا 
Ina sometimes gives the meaning of suddenly. Fujaiya. It's suddenly. Immediately. What happened here? It was, meaning the staff, it turned into hayyatun, a snake that was tas'a, that was running. Tas'a from sa'i. So just imagine, he throws the stick and the stick turns into a snake that is slithering, that is, is moving, that's running. Qala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Khudha, take it, grab it, pick it up. Just think about it. If somebody is telling you to touch a snake even, forget, touch the snake, go near it. Would you be afraid? Of course, you would be afraid. So Musa a.s. is told, وَلَا تَخَفْ And do not be afraid. تَخَفْ from خَ wa fa. Don't be afraid. Why? Because سَنُعِيدُهَا We are going to return it. نُعِيدُ عَيْنْ وَعْدَالْ We are going to return it. سِيرَتَهَا It's سِيرَة Meaning it's condition. الْأُولَى The first one. What was the previous condition of that snake? What was it before? It was a stick. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Don't worry, pick it up, it'll go back to how it was before. The word سِيرَة from the root letter سِينَ يَارَى What is سِيرَة? The study of? Of the life of the Prophet ﷺ, how he lived, what he did. Right? Sayyid, Sin Yara, Sayyid literally means to travel. Right? So, when you're studying the life of the Prophet ﷺ, it's as though you were traveling through his life. You're taking a journey through his life. When he was born, where he was born, what he did, what happened next, where he traveled. Right? It's literally a journey through his life. And Sira is the way, the condition, the manner of something or someone. Alright? It's not just to travel, but also the way, the manner, the condition of something or someone. How it is. So sira, it's condition. We'll return it to its former condition. So this was one miracle that was given to him. Another miracle was given also. Wadmum. Dham. Dhad mean mean. Dham is to join. To draw close together. To bring together. So wadmum, join, yataka your hand, ila janahik, to your side. Janah is the wing of a bird. But when the word janah is used for a human being, then it can refer to the side of a person, it can refer to his hand, it can refer to his forearm, it can refer to his upper arm, it can even refer to his armpit, all right, the side of a person. This is what janah is. So, wadmum yadaka ila janahik. Draw your hand, bring it close to or join it with what? With your side. With your side. What does that mean? Place your hand under the arm. Okay? Because in another place in the Quran we learn, wa adkhil yadaka fi jaybik. Insert your hand in your Shirt, into the opening of your shirt. So it seems like he was told to put, place his hand on, under his arm. Alright? So, وَقْمُمْ يَدَكَ إِلَى جَنَاحِكَ When you will do that, تَخْرُجْ It will come out, meaning when you will draw it out, it will come out بَيْضَ Glowing, white, shining. بَيْضَ Like almost bright. مِنْ غَيْرِ سُوء مِنْ from غَيْرِ without سُوء in any evil. Meaning, your hand will not be burning on fire, or it's not that your hand is discolored, or something like that. No, it's not like your hand is diseased. No, you will not be hurt, you will not suffer because of that at all. Min ghayri su. Ayatan, a sign, ukhra, another. This is another sign. This is another miracle that you have been given. And what was that? The glowing hand. لِنُرِيَكَ So that we may show you مِنْ آيَاتِنَا Some of our signs. Which signs? الْكُبْرَى The great ones. الْكُبْرَى It's the feminine of أَكْبَر. أَكْبَر Greatest. كُبْرَى also Greatest. So these are some of the greatest signs, great miracles that we are giving you. Why? اِذْهَبْ Go. إِلَى فِرْعَوْنِ To فِرْعَوْنِ إِنَّهُ طَغَى Because indeed he has transgressed. طغى طغين يا What is طغيان? Rebellion, exceeding bounds. 
Go to Fir'aun because Fir'aun has exceeded all bounds. How? By his oppressing the Bani Israel, enslaving them and torturing them. And not just that, he has also transgressed all bounds by claiming to be God. By demanding that people should worship him. By demanding that people should think he is God. اِذْهَبْ إِلَى فِرْعَوْنَ إِنَّهُ طَغَى So, this was a very heavy responsibility that was being given to Musa a.s. It was not easy. But like I mentioned to you earlier, whenever Allah gives a task to his slave, then he also equips him. Whenever you are put in a situation, remember that you can go through that. You can deal with it. And this is the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed you in that situation. If you did not have the ability, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would never have put you in that situation. Because, أَلَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ خَلَقْ The one who created, does he not know his creation? Does he not know what you are capable of? So why would he put you in a situation that you cannot handle, that you cannot deal with? And, you know, when we say, oh, no, 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 I can't do this, this is not possible for me, no way, then we are basically objecting Allah's decision. You know that? Or we are implying that what Allah has decreed for me is not okay. What He has decreed for me is not right. So we are criticizing Allah's judgment, we are criticizing His wisdom. This is what we're doing. Because, Think about it. If you have a phone, alright? If you have a phone. Now the phone has a particular purpose for which it was built, right? And it can only fulfill that purpose. It cannot do something that it was not made for. A phone was made so that you can make phone calls with it, right? And you can send text messages and whatever features it has, you can use them. But if a person is using a phone as a coaster, Alright, to put his hot dishes on, then if the phone breaks, that's whose fault? That person's fault, right? And what does it show? When I mentioned this example, I saw smiles on your faces. What does it show? Foolishness. What were you thinking? The phone is not meant to be a coaster. It's meant to be a phone. Right? So when we think like this, Why is this happening to me? I don't think I can do this. I'm not capable of doing this. We are criticizing who? Al-Rabb. We are criticizing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَا يُكَلِّفُ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا وُسْعَهَا Allah does not impose on any servant anything except that it is within its ability. Except that it can handle it. So Musa alayhi salam is told, اِذْهَبْ إِلَى فِرْعَوْنَ إِنَّهُ طَغَى Look at the response of Musa a.s. He realizes this is very heavy, this is very difficult. فِرْعَوْنَ of all people. So then he asks Allah for help. Ya Allah, you're sending me? You help me. قَالَ He said, Rabbi, O oh my Lord, إِشْرَحْ Open, leave for me صَدْرِي my chest. Open my chest for me. إِشْرَحْ شِينْ رَاحَ شَرَحَ Literally means to cut meat. But cut not as in cut it into pieces, but cut as in cut it in a way so that it becomes big. Remember I showed you a video once upon a time? Hmm? So for example, you get a big piece of meat. Imagine a butcher shop. You see all those huge pieces of meat hanging there, right? So then what do they do? They slice it from the side. All right, They slice it and then they open it. Alright? So it was closed. They put a slit on the side. So now it becomes big and open. This is what Ishrah is. Sharh. That Ya Allah, my chest, it feels very small. I don't think I have that capacity, that courage inside me to do this job. So you expand my chest for me so that I am able to carry this responsibility. I am able to Do my best. I'm able to fulfill this responsibility. Because I don't find myself capable. You expand my chest for me. Because, you know, sometimes when you're doing something, you feel afraid. Right? You feel afraid. You don't think you can handle it. 
So Musa alayhi salam, instead of feeling that fear, he's turning to Allah, Ishrah li sadri. Ya Allah, open my chest for me. And this dua is very helpful when you are finding it difficult to do something, when you are feeling afraid of doing something, when you feel that you don't comprehend something fully, you don't think you can retain some information, this dua is very helpful. You know, for instance, you're doing your lesson, but it's not going in. So, Ya Allah, expand my chest so that the lesson goes in. Expand my chest so that I can comprehend. Expand my chest so that I can retain. Expand my chest so that I can deliver. Ishrah li sadri. Wayasir li amri. Wayasir. And make easy. Facilitate. Leave for me, amri, my task. Yasir is from taisir, yusr. Inna ma'al usri yusra. What is yusr? Ease. Right? But remember that yusr, ease, doesn't mean when something is very, very simple, that the difficulty level is very minimal. This is not yusr. Yusr, yassar al-faras, lirruku. What is faras? A horse. Yassar al-faras, meaning the horse has been trained, it has been equipped. For what purpose? For the purpose of riding. Just imagine there is a wild horse. Wild horse. And you're told, go ride it. Can you ride it? No, you would be afraid even approaching it. But if there is a horse that is trained, that is tamed, the saddle is on, everything is done, and you're told, just go ride it, would you be able to ride? Yeah. Does it mean that riding is easy? No, it's not easy. Especially for beginners. It will still be difficult. But is it possible for them to ride on that horse? Yes. Is it possible for them to learn how to ride? Yes. Why? Because the horse is prepared. Right? Likewise, if somebody tells you, you know, here is a dictionary, Arabic to English dictionary, figure it out. Figure it out yourself. You're like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do this. But if they say, okay, this is a dictionary and this is how you use it. All right, And they explain to you how the dictionary is arranged, how you can find the meanings, where you will find the meanings. Then finding the meanings, that doesn't become simple, but it is possible for you. Because you know how to do it. This is Taisir. Yassir li amri, facilitate my task for me. Not make it simple, but give me the ability, give me the courage to do it. Grant me success. Yassir li amri. Wahlul and open, untie, ruqdatan, not, millisani from my tongue. Wahlul, halla. Halla, halal is also from the same root. It literally means to untie a knot. So, wahlul uqda, and uqda, ain qafdal, a knot. Uqdatun nikah, we learned earlier. The knot of marriage. Because it's used for a contract also, right? So, wahlul uqdatan millisani. The knot which is in my tongue, untie that. Musa a.s. is basically making dua for fluency in speech. Because it is said that Musa a.s. he was not able to speak fluently. He was not able to speak fluently. In Surah Zukhruf ayah 52 we learned that Fir'aun said, أَمْ أَنَا خَيْرٌ مِّنْ هَذَا الَّذِي هُوَ مَهِينٌ وَلَا يَكَادُ يُبِينٌ Fir'aun criticized Musa a.s. that he hardly makes himself clear. He's not able to speak clearly. In Surah Al-Qasas, Ayah 34, it is said, وَأَخِي هَارُون هُوَ أَفْصَحُ مِنِّي لِسَانًا Musa a.s. said, My brother Harun is more fluent than me in speech. In Surah Al-Shu'ara, Ayah 13, it is said, وَيَضِيقُ الصَّدْرِ وَلَا يَمْطَلِقُ لِسَانِي Musa a.s. said that my chest feels tight and my tongue is not fluent. My tongue is not fluent. That while talking, I get stuck. I'm not able to express myself clearly. I'm not able to speak fluently. So, wahlul uqdata min lisani. But isn't it amazing that despite that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose him? Despite the fact that he had difficulty in speech, in talking, Allah still chose him. Because being able to speak well, yes, it's a very good skill to have when you are delivering a message to people. But it is not the only skill that is required. It is not the only skill that is required. When a person speaks from the heart, and they speak with knowledge, 
then you know what? Even if they have an accent, and even if you don't fully understand what they're saying, their words will still hit you. Their words will still touch you. One sentence from them is sufficient to move you. Why? Because you're speaking from the heart. They know what they're talking about. So remember that when you want to do any work for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then what is the way? That وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ وَيُعَلِّمُكُمُ Allah. You fear Allah and do your best وَيُعَلِّمُكُمُ Allah, And Allah will teach you. Allah will give you the necessary skills. What is our focus on? Let me first complete this degree and that degree and that degree and this and then I'll do something for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then what happens? We get so caught up in that that we forget to do the work of deen. I'm not saying that studying other different things is unimportant. It is necessary. These skills are necessary because they enhance you. They improve you. They make you more effective in your work. But our focus should not just be on material things. It should not just be on outward things. Our focus should be where? On our heart. And if you look at the dua of Musa alayhi salam, رَبِّ شْرَحْ لِي صَدْرِي وَيَسْهِرْ لِي أَمْرِي Then he comes to the tongue, وَحْلُ الْعُقْدَةَ مِنْ لِسَانِي And if he wants fluency in speech, it's not because he wants to leave a good impression on people or because he's afraid that he will embarrass himself. No. What is the reason? What's the next ayah? What's the next ayah? Read it. يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِي يَفْقَهُ from fiqh to understand that they understand my words, what I'm saying to them. He's not focused on himself. He's focused on the people that he has to deliver the message to. That, Ya Allah, if I am not able to speak fluently, they will not understand what I'm telling them. I don't want fluency in speech for myself, for my ego, for my good image. No, I want fluency in speech so that I can deliver the message properly. And from this we learn a very important lesson, that whenever you're doing anything, shift the focus from yourself to your audience. Shift the focus from yourself to those whom you are talking to. You know, for instance, many people, they're afraid to speak on the mic. They're afraid to go on the stage. Why? Because they're like, oh, everybody's going to be looking at me. And what if I make a mistake and I'm going to look like a fool? I'm going to embarrass myself. So I'm never going to touch that mic. Right? These are the kind of things we say. But why do we think like this? Because we're concerned about ourselves. I don't want to look like a fool. Whereas our focus should be on who? On who? People. I want to give something to them. I have to give something to them. I want good for them. Forget about me. I care for them. And when you will care for others, then Allah will give you skills. Allah will enable you. Allah will give you the strength. Allah will give you the ability. And this is how sincerity comes also. Ikhlas comes. Because when you're constantly looking at yourself, what about me, my image, I should look nice, I should sound good, I should sound beautiful, then what happens? Your intention is corrupted. Then you begin to expect praise or you want people to notice you and you want people to appreciate your efforts. So this is a very good way of keeping your intentions good. I went to a workshop once where they were teaching how to give dawah and the instructor was telling us about this man who works on the dawah team and he has a really, like he has an accent that you would laugh at but he like makes people revert like more than anyone else or help facilitate that process so it's not that he was afraid that he has an accent but he does the work and he's not afraid to do it. Very true. And you'll find numerous examples of this. Numerous examples. That where, you know, for instance, my mother also, she does not like to speak in English at all. She doesn't like it. But when she would sit in tafsir class, all she had to say was just one or two sentences in English and literally everybody would be like, that makes so much sense. That makes so much sense. You know, a few sentences from her were enough. 
because mashallah the hikmah the the wisdom that you can see that you can feel in the words of a learned person in the words of a scholar that's incomparable to a person who might be very fluent in their speech using big fancy english words and doesn't touch you so focus should be on the heart bismillah assalam alaikum i remember once when i was a student i really afraid of mic i really don't want to talk in the mic how about my accent in english and then once i hear this man he's converted muslim and he uh, stopped the sheikh from the khutbah to share surah al-fatiha and then i said to myself this man he knows only surah al-fatiha and i know maybe half of the quran and uh, like i'm not sharing so i don't really care about my accent i will share maybe because of that allah will forgive my sin yes so always be greedy for reward from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you know if allah guides even one person through you that is better for you than red camels so forget about yourself forget about your image that you'll embarrass yourself think about what you have to convey focus on the message 